Hello everyone, this is Pahamar, and welcome to Let's Mod Reboot. Let's Mod Reboot is a series where I will attempt to teach you how to make a mod for Minecraft using Minecraft Forge, specifically for Minecraft 1.7. Um, I'd like to first thank my patrons and all my supporters and my fans for encouraging and sometimes pushing me uh, towards getting back into doing Let's Mod. It was something I really enjoyed before, and I just I struggled to find the time to get it done because I wanted to make sure it was as professional as possible, and I can't always guarantee that, so I will be a little bit more mindful of that in the future, and I just I really want to help people learn how to make mods. So this series, like I said before, will focus on making mods for um, Minecraft using Minecraft Forge which is, uh, I guess you could call it a uh, an API, although it's not really. It's more of a compatibility framework would be a better description. This is by no means the only way you can make mods for Minecraft. Uh, this is the way I am most familiar with. There are many other ways out there. Uh, I like this way because it offers a lot of um, helpful tools and things to hook into. It can make modding very easy. So that's the reason I went with Minecraft Forge originally. In today's episode, episode one, we will be going over how to set up your development environment and we're going to go into your first build script. So your development environment is the area in which you will actually be doing your programming. There are many different ways you can set this up. Uh, today I will show you how to set it up uh, using uh, sorry, for the Eclipse IDE, as well as the uh, IntelliJ IDEA IDE. Uh, in previous Let's Mod, Eclipse was my IDE of choice. However, now, um, between then and now, I am now a IntelliJ user. I highly recommend it. Both of these uh, have free uh, downloads. IntelliJ is, sorry, Eclipse is a completely free product. Uh, IntelliJ it has both a community free version, a community edition, and a uh, full commercial edition. The community edition is the one I use. I don't, I'm not lacking for any features, uh, so I highly recommend um, IntelliJ, but use whatever environment you are comfortable with, even if it's just a basic text editor. So, why don't we get started? We should probably first touch on the prerequisites you'll need to have or understand prior to getting into this tutorial series. So Minecraft is a game that's programmed using Java. It's so a very first, right off the bat, you will want to make sure you have a good understanding of Java. If you don't understand what an interface is, or how to override something, or how to make a class or an enumeration. You should probably follow some online tutorials first on how to uh, get acquainted and to get familiar and possibly excel at uh, programming in Java. We will be programming in Java 1.6, that's the version Minecraft is on right now. You can program at later versions of Java, uh, Java 1.7 and 1.8. Um, as long as it's 1.6 or higher, you will be okay. As well as in this series, we will be using version control for our code. What version control is, is that it is a way for you to keep track of the changes you've done to your code over time. Uh, and it's just, it's a really good thing to do. There's any number of reasons I could uh, go into to explain why it's a good idea to version control your software. Um, but just do it. We will be using Git. Uh, is our version control software and we will be hosting our projects on github.com which is a online um, version control service. Uh, there are many others out there. Uh, Bitbucket, Bitbucket, all one word, is another good example of one. Uh, you can use whatever you like. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use Git as well. You could be using Subversion or Mercurial or anything else. I just recommend use one we will be using Git. And once again, you'll also want to make sure that if you are going to be using an IDE, um, you will want to have it installed. So if you want to use Eclipse, make sure you have it installed before we get started. I will not be going over in this series how to install Java, how to install your IDE, how to install Git. I'm going to assume that that's been done already, and we're just going to jump right into the matter at hand. 
So the first thing we have to do, because we're going to be uh, a good developer and we're going to use version control, is we need to set ourselves up a code repository. Code repository is just where you put your code. So let's go over to GitHub. So I've logged in as myself. Once you've, uh, you're gonna need to create an account if you're going to be using GitHub. If you're using GitHub at the top, or there's this green button here, you're going to want to select new repository. This will allow you to create your new, uh, pardon me, your new repository. So the repository name for this, we will call it Let's Mod Reboot. I will make it a public repository because all of my mods are open source mods. Uh, you do not have to um, make your mods open source. I highly recommend it um, for two big reasons. One, it will allow other people to help you because they will be able to quickly and easily see your code and point out where things are wrong or where improvements could be made. And then number two is other people who are looking to learn can look at your code and figure out how to do things. Uh, and I can tell you from personal experience, it is very satisfying to have someone uh, thank you for uh, your code teaching them how to do something. So we will make it a public one and we will initialize it with a readme. A readme in GitHub is basically just uh, the first text document, um, kind of outline what everything there is. So I will add a license. Um, in my previous series, there's a licensing video. Uh, it is still relevant, so I recommend watching that. I'll put a link uh, in the video screen here. Uh, but for now, we will make Let's Mod Reboot a GPL version three uh, licensed mod. And I will add a, oh, I'm not gonna worry about that. So create that. And there we go. Now we have our empty code repository. So you can see here, um, because I selected a license, it actually includes a copy of the license, uh, which is to, uh, per the terms of the GPL, as well as there's this readme.md file. And that's this right in here, if you can see where my mouse is in the middle of the screen. This is the, uh, the first document uh, that shows up in your GitHub, kind of explains how things are. So from here, we have a functioning code repository. Now we need to get it onto our local system. So I'm going to open up a directory. I recommend having a designated projects folder somewhere on your computer. This is my Windows computer, so I happen to have it on my D drive in a projects folder. Inside of that, I have a Minecraft folder. And then I have folders for the different versions of Minecraft. So because we are making a mod for Minecraft 1.7, we will be putting it in here. And you can see I actually have equivalent exchange three, as well as my mod gem entry in here. So Windows has a handy feature. Uh, this isn't necessarily going to work for everyone, but I'm just gonna show it here because people are gonna ask. You can shift, right click in a window. And you can open a command window here, because this is going to be command prompt driven. This is a standard Windows command prompt. I just happen to have colored it blue in the background. So let us go back to our GitHub page. And you'll notice in the bottom right, there is an HTTPS clone URL box. It's got a bit of text in there. Click on it once, it'll highlight it all. Or actually, let's do this. Click on the clipboard to copy it to your clipboard. And let's go back to our command prompt. So what we wanna do, because we're using Git in this particular example, so this may not pertain to all of you, but for those who are using Git and have Git installed properly on your system, and you can check that by doing Git version. And you can see I have Git installed. The command to clone uh, a GitHub repository onto your desktop is git clone, and then the URL that you copied into your clipboard from here you can just paste that in there. So I'm gonna hit enter. And there we go. So if we actually look back here, we can now see that we have a let's mod reboot folder and it has the license and the readme that we have in the code repository here. So now we have a local copy of what's online. So what happens now is uh, when it comes to version control is anytime an edit is made to one of these files, you then have the option to push it 
back to the code repository, and then it'll be available for everyone. So that is setting up your code repository. The next thing we will want to do is we will want to get ourselves a copy of Minecraft Forge. So to do that, we go to our web browser, and we go to, and the website is, files.minecraftforge.net. And you can see I've been here a few times. So files.minecraftforge.net. When you go here, you will be given a list of all kinds of different downloads. What is of particular interest to us is these two rows here. So the top one is the latest version of Minecraft Forge from Minecraft 172. So this is the bleeding edge version of Forge. Below that is the recommended version for Minecraft 172. Recommended is considered the stable. We know it works, everything's fine. Latest is latest and greatest. It includes bleeding edge changes and it could be broken. So use with caution. I happen to know from experience that uh, Forge 1110, the latest currently right now, is a good version to use. So you will, uh, we'll do it from here. You can either click the source link here or the one in the, uh, the larger list below, and that will download this particular one. We'll do it from AdFly. Uh, I will point out once I've started this download that there's an AdFly, uh, there's a non-AdFly link as well. So we'll save this. If you look at the asterisk beside source, that will actually also get it to you without using AdFly. Now that our download is complete, we will open up the zip and we will see all kinds of uh, contents inside of it. So. There is a basic build script in here, which we'll get into later. There are some credits files to, uh, to give credit to who developed uh, FML, which is Forge Mod Loader, which happens to be Minecraft CPW, a brilliant man. It includes a copy of the change log, so this is what's changed between uh, all the different versions of Forge. These ones right here I will highlight. These are um, a Gradle wrapper. Gradle is a build system that Forge is using. Um, previously, uh, I think Minecraft 1.6 and earlier, we were using Ant as a build system. So Gradle um, is very powerful and you don't necessarily need to have it installed like Ant previously. So now you can actually just copy this onto your, uh, into your workspace and it will just work for anyone no matter what your operating system is. We also have some more credits and some licensing information. So what do we need to get started? So I'll just bring up our um, local code repository. What we need here is we need the Eclipse folder, the Gradle folder, build.gradle, and then these two Gradle files. This is all you need to get started with Forge. So we will just drag them in, and we're done. So I can close the zip, and I can now close Firefox. So now, we can actually do the first build of, uh, of our environment. So to do your first build, you need to make sure that you are in the directory that has these Gradle scripts in it. If you want to know the different options you have to run, because um, in Ant, there's the concept of build targets, Gradle has the same. Uh, they're called tasks, however. You can actually run Gradle W, which uses this Gradle wrapper. Uh, so you don't have to have Gradle installed. This actually is a working version of Gradle right in here. You can type Gradle W space tasks. Gradle will run for a moment. And it will give you this big list of all the different jobs it can run. So it has build tasks, build setup tasks, documentation. Forge Gradle is the proper term for the build system that Forge uses. It is a custom one. Then there's help and IDE and, and other things. What we need to worry about right now is just this one. 
Gradle W space setup decomp workspace. So you can actually see that is an option right here under Forge Gradle tasks, setup decomp workspace. So this will give you the dev workspace, which is this one, plus the deobfuscated Minecraft source linked as a source jar. You only need setup dev workspace. I recommend going with the decomp one because this will also give you the decompiled version of my um, decompiled code for this version of Minecraft, which is very helpful if you want to see how it's working in vanilla. This will allow you to see that um, without having to go through any hoops. So when you're ready to run this, so once again, Gradle W space setup decomp workspace, just press enter. And it will start uh, start decompiling uh, Minecraft. So this could take several minutes. Uh, we'll let this run, and we'll be back. Okay, so now we can see that it has finished uh, setting up the decompiled uh, workspace environment. So briefly, you can see what it does. It was it will actually download uh, the version of Forge uh, that uh, we've specified in our build script, and we'll get into that briefly. Uh, and it downloads MCP, uh, any related assets it needs, it decompiles it and then recompiles it. So now what we can do is we can set up uh, our IDE development environment. So if we scroll up above here, we can actually see that in the IDE tasks, we can actually tell Forge Gradle, uh, which is these commands we're running right here, to set up the Eclipse environment or the IDEA environment. So if you wanted to set it up with Eclipse, you would just say Eclipse. If you wanted to set it up with IDEA, uh, you will use IDEA. So we will run it with Gradle W space Eclipse, and this will set up our Eclipse environment. Okay, so now the Eclipse environment has been set up by the script. So now we can actually launch Eclipse. And what you want to do is you want to point it at the provided workspace. So for example, if we go to D drive and we go to projects, Minecraft 1.7, let's mod reboot. I think this is it. No, it is not. Sorry, I haven't used Eclipse in a very long time. Uh, I'm very familiar with... I am very familiar with uh, IDEA. Uh, that's my choice. Uh, so we will see if this is correct. This is correct. That is the workspace you want. So the workspace, when you're setting up your uh, Eclipse, you will want to point your Eclipse workspace at um, the Eclipse folder inside of your mods folder. So you can see here, we have uh, everything in our folder as well as all the libraries for Minecraft. So there we go. And I believe it actually did it. It did. Okay. And it actually does come with the pre-configured uh, run configurations to run Minecraft. So you can see this is a quick and very easy way to make sure everything worked properly. Is when you've uh, loaded up this workspace, go to run and just hit run. It'll say run last launch now, but uh, you can actually look at the run configurations and you can see the uh, different ones that have been brought in. So we're not gonna go too much into details to how to use Eclipse. Um, like I've said multiple times now, I prefer IDEA. Uh, what you will want to know is any code you make, you wanna make sure in Eclipse you put it in the source folder here. So with that being said, uh, I'm gonna close Eclipse and we're gonna do this again with IDEA. Okay, so I've shown you how to set up your development environment uh, in Eclipse. Now I'm going to show you how to set it up in IntelliJ IDEA. So uh, what I've done already is I, I just um, deleted the folder we were working in before, rechecked out the project, reran uh, the setting up of the decompile workspace. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to set it up in IntelliJ. So the command to set it up in IntelliJ is very similar to what it is in Eclipse. It is Gradle W space IDEA. Hit enter. This will run for a few moments. Uh, it doesn't take very long. And we're done.
So now we can load up IntelliJ. And from here, you select Open Project. You go to the folder in which you are holding everything, uh, your local copy of the code. So here it's Projects 1.7 Let's Mod Reboot. Click OK. It will open up the project. And if you look in the project window on the left here, you can see all the files. You can click Project and go to Packages. No packages will show up because we have no code in there. Uh, we'll get into that, uh, actually getting code in there the first uh, few more episodes. So we'll go back to Project. And if you click this drop down right here, this is the run configuration. You can see there's a client and a server. We'll just pick Client, we'll hit Play. And with some luck, uh, we will start to see that Minecraft is launching. There we go. So that's all we're going to cover in this episode. This episode was purely development environment. Next episode, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about build scripts. Uh, we will not uh, go terribly in detail. Uh, so the next episode is probably going to be a short one. Uh, later on in this series, we will get more into advanced build scripts. So these will be build scripts that will um, generate change logs and put files up on servers and automatically publish to sources such as CurseForge. Um, but that's a bit advanced for right now. So next episode, we'll get into the build script uh, more specifically, and uh, and we'll go from there. So uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you're as excited as I am to uh, to make mods for Minecraft, and we will see you next time. Much love.